Welcome to the Essence of You podcast, brought to you by your host, Stephanie Schechter. Today, I wanted to share a podcast called the Determined People Podcast that I was interviewed on by a dear friend of mine, John Harrell. It's about my story, and he's just such a great interviewer, and I really enjoyed that podcast, so I wanted to share it on here. I hope you guys enjoy and get some good inspiration and takeaways. Let me know by leaving a review. If you like it, feel free to share, like, subscribe, all the goods. I deeply appreciate all of it. Much love. I met our guest today, Stephanie Schechter, in 2018. I hated her. I'm teasing. She was my trainer at, a, at my gym, and she was a beast to train with. I said, I want to sweat, and I want to work out, and I want to feel it. She goes, okay, mission accomplished, and it was. Since that time, I've, I've kept up with Stephanie. She's a serial entrepreneur. She's got a lot of irons in the fire, and we're going to talk about a lot of those. But she's also been on a healing journey. As you all know, I rarely use the word journey because it makes me sound like I should be on the Dr. Phil show or something. I use the word trip, as you know. Sometimes life is a trip down the yellow brick road. Sometimes it's like an acid trip. Depends upon the day and the event. So let's get started. Stephanie, welcome. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. We've been looking forward to this. We, we talked about this a year ago. I know. As we both agree, you trust the timing, right? It, exactly. Trust the timing. So you grew up here in Austin. Born and raised, okay, yes. Okay, and you took off to California for a while, took off to I Europe, did. and we'll maybe get into some of that. But, but you know, I met you. You were, you were a personal trainer at, the, at my gym. Mm-hmm. What led you to be a personal trainer? Oh, <laughs> you just want to inflict pain on people. That's deep. <laughs> well, I found comfort in it mm-hmm. myself, and I was just really good at it. It was my armor. Mm-hmm. So yes, which yeah. we'll take that armor. Yeah. Back here in a little uh-huh. while. But yeah, and you were very good at it. Yeah. Um, Forty-five minute workout. I would be just drenched in sweat. You would. <laughs> I'm paying for this shit. You know. You're like, wait, what am I doing? But it was great. But you always had this light that just emanated from you, even even you know in that moment. And I, and I saw it and I felt it, which attracted me to, to stay in touch with you because I'm very, I'm like you, I'm very careful about my circle of who I hang mm-hmm. out with. I even heard you say on another podcast, you're even careful about who you will return text messages to. Mm-hmm. So she's still texting me, so I guess I'm in, in the fold. <laughs> but, you know, you've been on a healing journey. Can you, can you sort of talk about that a little bit? It's been an uncovering and understanding of so much. Um, I felt like I was living in turmoil and I was just tired. Mm -hmm. I had terrible sleep. I was a highly functioning, anxious person, I say. Um, Allergies, which I'm grateful for because then it created me or it had me create my company. Mm -hmm. But I was just... I noticed I was just tired, all these health issues. And I thought, there's got to be something else that I don't know. Like, there's got to be something that happened or something, you know, something. So I went to discover that. And I always say familiarity breeds comfort. Mm -hmm. So you got to ask yourself, you know, why am I staying in this relationship? Why am I continuing to go back to that thing that really hurts me? Oh, it's because I'm used to this pain. I'm used to not feeling good. I'm used to that, like, hurt. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want that anymore. Even though I was so conditioned to be that way. And, but I knew that there was something else. There was something more. You're very self-aware, and that comes through. But that's hard to do, to, to decide, because we have these neural pathways that we form. Mm-hmm. And they're hungry. And they are hungry. And the more that we go down that neural pathway with the wrong people, you know, the, the dendrites in the neural pathway are like supports to a bridge. They strengthen. Mm-hmm. What got you to the point where you finally said, I don't want to do this anymore? Because that's a brave step to do that. Not everybody does it. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. And... It was knowing the truth and reconnecting with the awareness that I've always had within, yet I chose to doubt it because 
at the time, you know, other people would go against what I knew because they were lying or whatever it may be. And so I just learned to suppress. Mm -hmm. And when I really found out the truth and it was like a full on blast from God, like, yes, you knew this. It, you are right. You're on cue. Like, let's go. Let's do this. It was hard to continuously go back. So I separated myself from everything for two years, mm -hmm. like no relationship, just full on path. Except the relationship with yourself. With my, yeah, growing that yes. because I didn't really have that. Or I didn't have that self-love aspect. Mm. Yeah. I wish more people would do what you did. Mm. You know, you see people, I've had friends that have broken up with, or divorced or something. I said, don't date for a year. Within a week, they're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Because they're not comfortable with themselves. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because they're not good with being alone uh -huh. and looking inside themselves, which mm -hmm. is something you did. So that's a brave step. I admire that. And Thank you. I, it doesn't surprise me either, knowing you, <laughs> knowing you. So you had, you described it in an, another podcast as a slight medicine journey. Mm -hmm. What was that? What was the medicine or what was the well, what journey? Was the, what was the medicine? The, what was the journey? And what did you discover? It was MDMA mm -hmm. for one of my birthdays, and it was a, you know, medical grade dose. I was covered. It was a full on ceremony. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, I prayed and said, I'm ready to see this, whatever it is. I had always had the inkling that something may have happened to me um, sexually when I was younger, but I always just kept pushing that aside it's like all right let's just see and you know an hour into it not even i asked i said okay what was it because i just was enjoying and in, enjoying the entry to it and immediately got the it was this and it was this person and i just screamed i fucking knew it and just started purging. Mm. Yeah. And I had known and all, it's like this tunnel of images of clicking into place of like all the pieces came together. Mm -hmm. And I got to see this tapestry just finished, not fully finished, but all of that because time is not, time is always happening. Right. So it, plugged everything in and just shot me where I was. I was like, oh, every instance that I felt that way, that I didn't know what that feeling was around this said person, I knew there's a reason I felt like I had, you know, spikes like going out my back every time I was around them and this chill going up my spine. There was a reason I had just suppressed it so long. So I was sexually abused when I was seven. No, six six or seven. I'm mm -hmm. still not quite sure. Still, so you're a little girl. Little girl. Baby. Not even fully here yet, you know? Because sure. it takes time for us to fully enter. And so our audience knows it was not a family member. It was <clears throat> not my father. It was not a family mother, member. It was not a family member. It was a father figure. It was a friend's father. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is, used to be a trusted adult. Yeah. <clears throat> no more. Yeah. So, if you would, <clears throat> would you walk our audience through the arc of all the emotions you felt as you process that? Not only mm. when you were on MDMA, but there's an after effect in having to go through all this because and, and mm -hmm. it was revealed to you what happened. And I'll say this gently, I, but I know a little bit about this. People who have been sexually molested some, sometimes feel like it was their fault, and it wasn't your fault, of course. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any feelings like that? How did you resolve them? What, what was the arc of the emotions mm -hmm. that you went through? And how did you process it? What was your process for getting through it? Oh, what a good question. So I, at first was very angry and hated him and just thought of how disgusting he was. 
and pictured myself, you know, accidentally maybe running into him to see, you know, to gauge where I was on the journey of healing. And it scared me. So I knew, okay, no, I'm, I, I can't do that. Um, as the little girl, I saw how I acted throughout my entire life because I was never able to fully allow myself to be seen. And I had gone back to that moment and thought, okay, well, if this happens to me when someone loves me and sees me, I don't want it. So I'm going to do whatever I can to hide, shield, shelter, push away, numb out, sayonara. That's the armor. That's the armor. It's a coping mechanism. Absolutely. And it it, co- it works until it doesn't. Uh-huh. That's when you've got to, it bubbles to the surface. Yep. You can tamp it down again. You can numb it out. Mm-hmm. It's going to come back. And mm-hmm. at some point, you're not going to be able to take, to take it out. Mm-hmm. Have you forgiven the molester? Mm-hmm. Not to his face or anything. I don't even know if he would remember um, because he was an alcoholic. And no excuse. No excuse. But, you know, to Sanat. But yes, I laugh because I think I think those things are so much deeper Mm -hmm. than the person. It is the forces that we cannot see, Mm -hmm. the, you know, the good or evil. I call it demonic, yes. Yes. There's a battle going on around us. Always. You can't see it. Just because we can't see it doesn't make it less real. Absolutely. And so I laugh and say, (laughs) you knew my light was this bright that you tried to stomp me. And it worked for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll give you that. But... I came to break these generational curses. Yes. I came to be a light and carry people through. And here I am. Hmm. I triumphed yet again. Thanks. Yeah. It's part of the Yeah. Our experiences make us what who we are. Mm-hmm. Even the one even the bad experiences. Mm-hmm. It prepares us for something else. And now you're also a <clears throat> Reiki pr- practitioner. Mm-hmm. So you are carrying people through. Mm-hmm. Share, for our audience members who don't know, share what Reiki is, how you got into it, and how it applies to healing other people. It is a form of energy healing. It's a form of healing using energy, um, using being able to tap into your auric field. And personally with me, you know, everyone has their own. It is Reiki. However, it's a lot more. Um uh, and I can feel it in my body and like whatever they're going through, if I get their permission, I know where they're holding on to trauma, injuries, which is essentially trauma, mm-hmm. emotions, what they're not letting go of, what is going on, what their inner child needs, which I also did a lot of inner child healing through that journey. Uh, yeah, it's just can reduce anxiousness. Most people just say they completely feel different, feel lighter, and that their life is completely different. Yeah. But you can truly feel what they have inside of mm-hmm. them. Sometimes and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You ever go like, shit? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm like, whew, this is heavy. And the question I have is, how do you not take that on yourself? How do you separate that? Because that's got to be emotionally exhausting for you. Mm -hmm. It definitely took some learning how to process it because I did at first take it on fully myself and did it Mm -hmm. myself. And then I would be out for the count the rest of the day. But now I have a method of tapping, you know, cold water and just allowing it to move through me instead of feeling like I need to carry it for them. Yeah. I'm just removing it from them. Yes. You're the conduit. Yes. You're the, you're the, you're the, the vessel. The healer. Yes. Yeah. That's great. So you, you know, in, intuitiveness like that doesn't just happen. No. You've had it all your life. Mm. How did that make you feel as a child when you were like, you were intuitive and like, did it make you feel weird or different, always, like an oddball or something or what? <clears throat> I always just thought that something was wrong with me. And 
let me touch back when that happened when I was a little girl, that incident, I put down a lot of my gifts. So I disconnected from my body. So when all these things were happening, I just thought something was wrong with me. Um, even in my household, I would feel anxiousness or guilt. And I'm like, what? I would say, what did I do? Because why do I feel this way? What did I, I did something to feel this guilty or this mad or, mm -hmm. so I didn't know how to shield that out and I didn't know what it was. Come present time, I know that I just had these gifts my entire life. And the moment I started healing it, they came in like a cannonball. <laughs> and at the time, actually, I was uh, private training uh -huh. people in California. And out of nowhere, I get the, the feeling, have them laid down. And I'm thinking, having this dialogue with myself, like, what are you crazy? Like, you're training them what? And it's like, just do it. Just trust me. Uh -huh. I'm like... What you, okay, I just need you to lay down and I would be doing stuff and my ego, my mind would say, what are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. And, and I'm like, Sh just shut up. Like, let me just work. And it would just, I, my hands would be moving all these ways and I'd be saying things and touching spots. And I didn't, it wasn't something conscious. It was just happening. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> that was fun. Well, you got to get on the unconscious, the unconscious side of the, the, that, that spirit side, if you will. Mm -hmm. You got to. My, my psychotherapist <clears throat> is a brilliant guy, and he told me a story one time. He's doing family of origin work with somebody, and he just he does that. He releases all the ego. He gets rid of, of the conscious, the, or the, the side that's going to talk you out of that feeling part. He said, I was working with this girl, and I didn't know her, but this was our first time to work together. And all of a sudden, my eyes are shut, and my mind floods purple. Mm -hmm. And he said, I have to ask you this. Does the word purple, I mean, does the color purple mean anything to you? And she said, yes. My sister who committed suicide, purple was her favorite color. She decorated her entire room in purple. And they've been talking about her sister. I knew the chills telling that story. Mm -hmm. It works. It really does work if you're listening. You know, we have two voices talking to us all the time. One's good. One's encouraging us, prompting us, pushing us, saying, yeah, you can do this. Don't be afraid. And in the, in the Bible, it says... Be, you know, don't be afraid 365 times. I don't think that's by coincidence. One per day. And the other voice is saying, who do you think you are? You don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to that one. Because mm -hmm. that one comes from the, from the evil side of, of the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. And like I say, because we can't see it, doesn't make it any, any, any mm -hmm. less real. It, mm -hmm. is, it is there. So, <clears throat> as you know, what have you learned about yourself as you've gone through all of this? Because that's quite a lot, lot to, to unravel here. Hmm. who I am mm -hmm. and humbly grateful of my gifts. Mm -hmm. What I actually like. Still learning. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, is that a story? Or... Is that a story from childhood or is that something that I actually resonate with? Just really fine tuning that. And like I said, it took discernment and yes. it took separating and really just kind of a little bit of isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's good because people, a lot, of, like, like we said, a lot of people don't like to be alone. Mm -hmm. You start your day with meditation. And would you expand a little bit on that? Do you have like a theme you meditate on on a certain day or is it like a word or do you just get quiet and just listen? Or would you expand on that? <clears throat> so when I meditate, I it's just quiet, all distractions aside and sitting with myself. And if I'm not feeling or hearing anything, because sometimes it comes in audibly, a lot of the poems I write mm -hmm. come from my meditations where I hear, okay, grab your pen and write this down. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not getting anything of what I think I should be getting, it's, it's really just to reconnect back to self mm -hmm. and just feel good. And you have a podcast, mm -hmm. The Essence of You. It's on everywhere you can get audio podcasts, but it's mm -hmm. also on your YouTube channel. 
And so, and I've, I've listened to every single one of them. And it's, it, it's, it's you know, I admire it. It's like, an, it's like an online journal where you pretty much just share your heart with the world and what's going on. They're short. They're, you know, the longest one I think is 16 minutes or so, but most of them are five to six minutes. But they're excellent content. How do you, you feel being so unguarded in the public sphere? Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I actually love it. And I know, so I got, it was a message to start using my voice and doing a podcast back in 2021. And I just, I was like, oh, I'll just be on other people's, you know, still that whole hiding, don't want to really be seen. The voice is so, it comes straight from who you are. So I love it. It's really helped me open up a little bit more. And it's, I love sharing that part of me because I know it will resonate with who it needs to resonate with. Exactly. It's brave. It's brave to do that because that is like an online journal. Do you, I have to ask you a question. Do you script it and then sort of read it or do you just speak from the heart when you record? I've tried to script it once. Didn't work. (laughs) (laughs) And I just stopped it, restarted, put it aside and just started talking. I have a feeling that comes out and Mm -hmm. then it just flows. I probably knew the answer to the question because if you script it, it's going to come out like, today I felt this. You know, it's just, uh-huh. it's not natural and not full of emotion and who you are. And, but it just flows. Thank you. You don't have a bunch of uh, uh, and anything like that in there. It just, it just flows with a beautiful message. It, and it is poetic. Thank you. It is. So I encourage our, our listeners and we'll put the name on, up on the screen so people yeah. can go find you and listen and get a short message that resonate with them encourage them to do the same thing Mm -hmm. journal your thoughts journal your feelings write them down Mm -hmm. Um, you know writing actually hits the same spot in the brain as meditation does really yeah not many people know that but it is it is a fact writing is very important i find it helps with the actual not talk to text not writing exactly not texting on your phone there's something that happens in the brain that really it gets it we talk about the dendrites and stuff it lets it sink in putting it out there yes. a little bit more. Yes, I've been writing a for lot. three and a half years every day. And it, see, it, it gets better. Mm-hmm. If, it, if it definitely, <laughs> why am I doing this yet? You know? You're like, this is hard. <laughs> it's so easy to just pick up your phone or type or, but I'm like, give me just a blue pen and yep. pe- a piece of paper. Then you've also got a written legacy for your family to have mm-hmm. as well. So let's move into the best of Steph. Steph's best. Mm, it is the best of Steph. <laughs> How did you come up with it? This is like a protein butter. Uh, well, describe it, if you will, because I'm gonna I'm gonna botch it. But it's like <laughs> I will tell you, folks, it's like liquid crack cocaine. You I say that too. You can't just eat one spoonful. Of this stuff is so good. Okay, so Steph's best came from getting diagnosed with thyroid issues, hormone issues. Um, not being able to eat a whole slew of things. Unresolved trauma. This is what happens. And so I went on a holistic route to attempt to heal my thyroid. And my holistic doctor had said, all right, well, we're going to go on an anti-inflammatory diet. That meant I couldn't have any nuts and a whole bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I love nut butters. I would be the kid eating Peter Pan out of the jar. At that time, it was Peter Pan, you know. And so I adopted the couple ingredients that I could have because at the time I did not like sunflower seed butter on its own. And I created something that I would look forward to having that I could enjoy that was good for me, good for my gut, anti-inflammatory, nut-free, no gluten, no dairy, no refined sugar, and it literally tastes like cookie dough. So it is a vegan, nut-free, fully allergen-friendly, healthy cookie butter, Mm -hmm. but you can use it, like swap it out with your normal peanut or almond, or I usually just eat it out of the jar. I've never spread it on a single thing. (laughs) I don't get that far, you know? I'm like, man, this stuff is so good. Oh, my God. That's oh. People ask me, so how do you eat it? Like on toast? I go, well, with a spoon, 
But you can put it on toast, smoothies, fruit, rice cakes, any of it. Why waste your time? Just just eat it. (laughs) That's what I agree. I'm like, I'll make a smoothie, but I put a whole lot in there so I can taste it throughout. Yeah, that is incredible. How many how many times did you, as you're creating Steph's best, how many times did you go? That tastes like shit. I need to go back to the drawing board. Never. No. It was always good. Really. I just wanted it to be perfect. Yeah. And then it's not even taste, but then perfect with the texture mm-hmm. and and taste. And then doing the nutritional facts, like making sure everything was in line. So I made it a lot, mm-hmm. a lot. I, I just started making it just for myself. And then I got encouragement from a couple of friends and family who are just like, this is so good. You should do something with it. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. And slowly over time, I'd be out there at the farmer's market in California or at a beach workout with it. But yeah, it was a it was a journey, and I had so much fun with it. Yeah, you don't have to refrigerate it. You just stick it in the pantry. It's and, yeah. shelf stable. You can get it online. You can get it at a couple stores in Austin. Mm-hmm. But it's really worth trying. Yeah, order it from bestofsteph.com. We'll put the put the link up on the on the interview. And I'll even do a <laughs> discount for this show. Really? Mm-hmm. What kind of, what, what do they need to put into the checkout to get the discount? Let's do Steph and John okay. for 15% off. 15% All off. lowercase. That's, okay. Steph and John, 15% off. They can only use it one time because they'll be, they'll only be repeat one customers. Time. <laughs> I know. So you better stock up. <laughs> use that 50% off. Stock up for yourself. I promise you, you will be glad that you did. This it's, stuff is so good. It's well, my now, favorite. I'm starting to, I'm starting to salivate. So I got, I got to switch, switch subjects here. I always say, even, uh, uh, even I've been eating it for so long, I still will take down a jar. Oh, in yeah. No time. yeah. And your TikToks and things that you do, the, the videos that you do, are great. Oh, you know, they're thank entertaining. you. They're, they're, they're entertaining. <laughs> and they're great. I love them because your Thanks. your personality comes through, and you just got this light to you that and we. It just it just it just comes through. Appreciate that. So one of the things I've heard you talk about is you know peace and not attaching yourself to outcomes. Mm. How did you get to that point? Knowing that outcomes only bring more joy and happiness, it should not be what makes you peaceful or happy. Peace is a state of being that you can enjoy forever. Mm -hmm. Always coming back to self, knowing that you are enough as you are without doing or trying to be anything or anyone. You as yourself, you might not even know what that looks like yet, Mm -hmm. but you to your core is worthy of being happy and at peace. Mm So that's. I use a different word than happy because happiness is moment by moment. I use fulfillment. Fulfillment. Because if you're fulfilled in your life and what you're doing, then that will get you through those moments when you're really not happy. Because mm-hmm. sometimes life is a shitstorm, as you know. It can it can throw a lot of stuff at you, but if you're doing fulfilling work and you're having fulfilling relationships with other people, whatever that friends, family, boyfriend, girl, whatever it is, that will get you through those moments when you're really just not happy, knowing that. Better days are coming. And it's just a part of the the process. Like, oh, this is, <clears throat> you know, those bad days I always say, <laughs> oh, this is part of the human experience. Mm-hmm. This is a very intense um, sensation, and I will get out of it. Yeah, get through it. Get yeah. through it. So you're a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> Yeah. Ever since I've known you, I do have to ask you about one thing. Is off subject here, but in your on your uh, YouTube, you sh- you show yourself that uh, you're getting ready for a per- for a training for a performance or a not, uh, competition, competition competition. But you talk about Peak Week and why is so hard. what is Peak Week and why is it hard? Oh my gosh! You never really defined what Peak Week is, and for a neophyte like me, I like what is it. <laughs> Let me try and remember. <laughs> Peak week is the week before you step on stage okay. where you're cutting sodium, <clears throat> cutting any kind of calories, 
increasing your water on days and decreasing it on certain days, increasing your carbs. So it's just a whole lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So that's like the pivotal, oh, it's the last week before the gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it like competing? I enjoyed the process. Mm -hmm. I, I did. It was so hard and challenging and it sucked at times. And looking at it in hindsight, I just enjoyed what it took me through. Yet the second time I did it, I realized, why am I stepping on stage? Why? Mm -hmm. To have someone else judge me for all this hard work? Like, I, I'm happy with this. Mm -hmm. So I realized in that moment, and I know people do it for different reasons, but in that moment, I realized I was doing it to feel a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, lost my train of thought. It happens. It'll come back at 3 a.m. I promise I won't text you at 3 a.m., <laughs> but it will come back. And we'll, be, we'll be done with this by that time. So you are a serial entrepreneur. What else do you have in the works that you can talk about? I have programs that I am creating that I am absolutely so excited about. So basically for women and men, mm -hmm. it basically the easiest way to present it is I carry you through this spiritual awakening to remove anything that's not you or maybe you're even on the process of it and remind you of the truth. Mm -hmm help you connect back to yourself, your source, God, mm -hmm. yeah. your power, like your compass. And a it's a reconditioning phase because like we said, the dendrites are so big, they're screaming. It takes time for your body to process, for your cells to process this new information. Mm -hmm. In ballpark, when might those programs be up? Because it's very worthwhile work if people are willing to do it. Self-work is the hardest, mm -hmm. but it's also the most worthwhile. Anything that's worthwhile is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. But if you can improve and, and get back in touch with who you are, because we lose that identity sometimes. We get so caught up in the world stuff. Like 20 years ago, I, kept, I stopped asking people when I meet them, well, what do you do? It's just a comparison thing, right? Comparison is, David, Henry David Thoreau wrote, comparison is the thief of joy. He's right. I'm just trying to see where do I stand, stand up in the socioeconomic scale of whatever. Like, that's so hollow. Quit doing it. And then, because otherwise, if you're doing that, you might miss something mm -hmm. in that person. You might miss an opportunity to connect with that person at a deeper level than just, you know, the surface level of what, what do I do, what do you do. It's not that important. Absolutely. Um, that's a good point. I'll ask people, tell me about yourself, and then they'll start telling me what they do. It's like, no, <laughs> I didn't ask that. That's not who you are. Yeah. And a lot of the times people don't know what to say because they don't know themselves. Yeah. So, yes, self-work. I always also ask people, what's your willingness to learn and accept change? Because this is not easy. It is going to be challenging. And that's why I am here to carry you through it. Because on the other side, oh, my gosh, like you wouldn't even believe mm -hmm. how good it feels. And so end of March, I'm shooting to launch it. Great. And how it feels to really feel again mm -hmm. and not numb things down or tamp them down or whatever, but to really feel and experience. Life. Is life, yes. So I think that's great. But you certainly are, are uniquely qualified to do that with the life trip you've been on and are still on. You're still on, I and mean, you're still discovering all kinds of things about yourself. Mm -hmm. As I said early on in the, in the, in the interview, you're – probably the most self-aware person I think I've ever sat down with. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. You worked for that, you know, you worked for that. It was, yeah, put in the hours, I still the years. Want, I still don't want to work out with you again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do Pilates with you sometime. Okay, that, that we can do, that we yes. can do. Yes. So let's uh, let's wind down here. Stephanie, what else would you like for, for our, our audience to know about you? Let me, uh, let me ask you one last question. How has your healing affected your relationships with men and women, your friend, mm. your friends and, and potential boyfriends. How has that affected them? What a golden question. Oh, 
Since I was unable and unwilling to sit with myself, I pushed everyone away. I didn't know what love felt like because I had associated it with that incident that happened, so I didn't want it. Now that I've learned self-love, met myself, and truly accept and love who I am, Mm -hmm. I am finding this love for the people that are in my life just opening. And it's it's not overwhelming. It's it's great. It's just a lot. And I haven't felt this deep about it. Mm-hmm. And just like, oh, the more I do my inner child work and, and love self, yeah. the more yeah. I can to others. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. You know, accept yourself because the creator of the universe created you exactly how he wants you to be. And... He see, we can't hide anything from him. He sees us exactly as we are, and he still loves us anyway, even me. You know? Well, well, and, and that's the other thing. You know, if you have your outlets and you're numbing, it's like you love God so much, but would you treat God that way? Hmm. And that's what I started asking myself. And that was like, a, whoa, no, mm-hmm. not at all. Because he wouldn't treat me that way. So why am I treating what he created? It's him. Yeah. We are walking images of God. Yes, we are. So yes, why are. would we ever not fully love that? That's that power. It's just, yeah. So that really, that took me there. Every problem our world has is a problem of the heart. It just is. Everything. And I have this, I've said this before, even on this podcast, I've said, <clears throat> If you really want to love yourself in a healthy way, see yourself the way the Creator sees you. He sees everything, right? And He still accepts us and loves us unconditionally. And he doesn't always like the decisions we make, but He doesn't doesn't change the way He feels about us. And once you can connect your head to your heart on that, there's a second step that's equally important. See your fellow man the same way. Mm-hmm. That will get rid of all bigotry, prejudice, separation, everything, because you realize that they're created in the same way that the Creator created you, and He loves them the same. As much as I like to think I'm His favorite, I'm not. You know, <laughs> I think I'm His favorite to, one to play pranks on. I think He gets all the angels to go, "Okay, we're going to mess with Harold today. Watch this. Watch what he. Watch what I do to him now." You know, <laughs> I think they get great delight in some of the some of the sitcom that is my life. But um, what else would you like our audience to know about you? That you can. Find me at obsessoverlife.com mm-hmm. if you want to work together. Obsessoverlife.com. It doesn't, doesn't have to be a program. Uh, I see you. I love you. You're doing good. It's never as bad as you think it is. And it's all happening for you. It really is. So if someone has the, they, they say, okay, I want to pursue some inner healing and I want to do a Reiki session. Then they can do that from at obsessoverlife.com. Obsessoverlife.com. Great. Stephanie, thank you. Thank you. You truly are a light in this world, and we need more people like you. But I'm so glad we connected and stayed in touch. I remember when you were in California, I would make I'd make video I used to make videos and I would send them out every couple of weeks. I loved and them. I'd always send them to you. Yeah. I yeah. did. I really <laughs> enjoyed because you know, life can especially in California, I feel like it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. And you can just forget and you would consistently even if I responded or not you would consistently show them I would always watch them and just be so grateful mm-hmm. yes so me, and my, me and my silly encouragement yeah. but, but it's just how I'm hardwired so yes. well thank you for watching them but uh, I always want to one of those people I always want to stay in touch with because again I've been a fan from from afar and up close and I can't wait to see how God continues to use you because I know it's going to be for the betterment of, of others and so Thank you again for coming on Thank and, you and sharing so your much. story. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. And that's our story. Our, that's our show for today, ladies and gentlemen. A little, little choked up there. So thank you for watching. And yet, here's some places that you can reach Stephanie. First of all, if you want that crack cocaine butter, <laughs> go to bestofsteph.com. Type in Steph and John, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-D-J-O-H-N at checkout to get 15% off. The second one is obsessoverlife.com. If you'd like to pursue... A conversation with Stephanie and see what she might be able to do to help you. You know, Mark Twain once wrote, two things are certain, death and taxes. Mark left one out, and that is human struggle. Everyone struggles. Sometimes the struggles are minimal, like 
I'm stuck in traffic, I'm gonna be 15 minutes late. Sometimes it could be insurmountable like the loss of a child and everything in between. So if you're struggling and you feel compelled to change, I encourage you, get in touch with Stephanie. You'll be glad, you'll be glad to know her, first of all. Secondly, she can help you, I promise. Thank you. I will be back on the audio podcast tomorrow with another one-minute message of encouragement, strength, and hope. Until then, everyone be well.